In today's video, I want you to think of exactly where it is that you wanna be in your construction career, and I want you to focus on that role and make that your goal throughout this video. I'm gonna provide some tips on how to get into that role using the typical promotional career path of a construction project manager, but I'd really give this advice to anyone on any career path, even those working outside the construction industry. Now let's talk about how we can help make this happen. Let's go. So we've all got to start somewhere in our career and that's usually at the bottom because we don't have any relevant experience. So we find ourselves a career path that we're hopefully passionate about. We start to learn from others early in our career and if we can pinpoint a continued reason of interest in what we're doing, it's only going to help us progress faster towards our eventual career goals. So an important aspect, which is cliche, but I believe it's absolutely true, is that you should be able to find passion in what you're doing. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, then don't waste your time. Go find something you are passionate about and pivot to pursuing whatever that might be in life. Now, sometimes passion might not be apparent at first because you might be thinking, oh, my passion is construction or civil engineering or architecture. Well, that's great, but that's not really specific and might not always carry you through the tough times in your career. So think a little bit beyond that and add some reason as to why you're passionate about what you're passionate about. I'm passionate because it's a career that gives me independence. I'm passionate because it's helping me build a future for my family, or I'm passionate because the impact on the community I'm providing, or I'm passionate because I get to meet the people I do along the way. Now, I'm not telling you that every day is going to be sunshine and rainbows, even if you are passionate, because it's not going to be. But always ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing as a means to check in and see if you still care about what you're doing. Again, if you don't care about what you're doing or don't have a good reason as to why you're doing it, then there's no harm in exploring other options. So what does passion have to do with promotion or career growth? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. But first, I just wanna say that not everyone is seeking to climb further into their career, and the point of this video isn't to push career growth on anyone. People find what they want as their end goal and have no reason to advance beyond that. They don't need to move up the ladder, and they're likely very happy as is. Meanwhile, others may want this growth in their career as part of their life, which is why I've decided to talk about this. So where passion meets promotion is along this path of learning and growth. So let's jump into this using the example in construction project management, where we can start Start off as an intern, move up to a project engineer, then to an assistant project manager, then project manager, senior project management, and finally as a project executive or project director. Now every step along the way, we're just going to follow the same mindset and approach. That mindset being, look at where you are right now and then look at where you want to be. There's a gap or a path between those two points that we need to clearly define. The sooner that we can define this path, the sooner that we can define success or a promotion or whatever this goal may be. So let's get to our example and talk about this by looking at the roles and responsibilities of a project engineer, which is typically the starting position for any large construction management company or general contractor. We'll call this project engineer position our starting point, which will be point A. So as we can see, a PE or a project engineer is responsible for a variety of tasks. Now it's fairly common, even with a formal degree from a college or a university for these individuals entering the industry, to lack these skill sets, which could make your first experience on a large commercial construction project fairly stressful. Essentially, you're trying to learn what your responsibilities are while trying to complete those responsibilities as timely as required to meet the project schedule, which can apply this stress if you don't actually know what you're doing. Your starting point might not even be a project engineering role. It might be an internship or some online self-education through YouTube videos or other resources that you can find. If you're looking for a basic education, feel free to subscribe and and stick around for my future videos because we're gonna be making our way through this entire list of responsibilities in those future videos that will better equip you for a stronger career in project management. I'll break down the meaning and importance of having each of these items as a skill set and how they apply to the project itself. Okay, so right now our point A is a project engineering role and our goal is point Z, which could be a project manager role. Well, in most cases, we can't skip through all the steps without some growth in between. So the next step on this career path is an assistant project manager. I'll just say your path to success doesn't need to be this linear. This is just an example to explain goal setting and goal alignment, which is a promotion since we're talking in terms terms of careers in this video. So most people can get to this end goal usually by stumbling around and figuring it out as they go, or we can really focus and fast track defining this path with a few easy tips to help guide you. So I've got our point A, project engineer. I've got our next point B, where we have to stop along this way, assistant project manager. And then I've got our end goal, point Z, project manager. 
So how do we know what the next steps are in the process and how do we know if we're moving in the right direction? The first step is defining the position which your company should be able to provide. You can also figure this out by searching roles and responsibilities under open job positions on any hiring website. So as a project engineer looking to be an assistant project manager, you would ideally be put on a team that has an assistant project manager above you and a project manager above that. This would be the best case scenario because of the immediate exposure to these roles. You might have only a project manager with no assistant project manager in between. It all depends on the size of the company and the size of the project. This is why I advocate and push people to look for larger companies earlier in their career, which provides maximum exposure to industry knowledge and experience by these larger teams and people and companies, which is what you need before managing your own projects. So in this scenario where you get put on a team as a project engineer with an assistant project manager, you're working side by side with someone who is already a your goal or at least your intermediate goal well that right there is invaluable and is your best immediate resource and I'll tell you why in just a minute if you want slower paced growth you show up and you do what's required of you as a project engineer there's absolutely nothing wrong with this approach and it will just likely take you longer to get towards your end goal if you want medium paced growth you do what's both required of you and you start to listen to those above you and start to process how they make critical decisions this approach doesn't take on any extra workload you're just actively absorbing invaluable knowledge while you're doing your current tasks. You do this day in and day out as you complete all your basic responsibilities as a project engineer. This in turn is going to start to associate construction with decision making because this is a learned skill set that not everyone is good at. Essentially, you're starting to catalog or framework how an assistant project manager and eventually a project manager would tackle situations. If you're just showing up and completing your tasks, you're going to be less prepared for any future role or additional responsibilities. This right here is your education, which is going to teach you more in one year than in four years at university or college. Also, start to pay attention to what makes this assistant project manager both successful or maybe not successful. You have to absorb both the good and the bad to understand what's right from wrong and what to do in certain situations and then you can start to apply this to your own work. So as you're completing your tasks as a project engineer and you're starting to listen to how decisions are being made, start to imagine that you're running this project. Literally, start to put yourself in a position of answering every question. Imagine there is nobody else there to help you, and this is gonna help your brain start to make critical decisions before the decisions are made for you. So when a question comes up in reference to any scenario, ask yourself, could I have answered that myself? In fact, try to answer the question in your mind before the assistant PM or the PM responds to see if you would have been successful in that moment. If the answer is no, then you just need to write that down and study what knowledge you were lacking. If the answer was yes, then that goes into this mental framework you're starting to establish that will start to mold you into this next role as an assistant project manager and eventually a project manager. These moments earlier in your career are risk-free lessons that are going to serve you throughout your career and help you improve drastically by teaching you how to function and respond in these future situations. Later down the road on any given project, look back and recall these questions and these answers to help inform current decisions. Ask yourself if the decisions that were made back then were made with positive or negative impact to the current project. You slowly start to adjust your mental process to make more and more correct decisions as you learn and grow. We call these lessons learned in the industry and you want to equip yourself with as much of this information as possible earlier on in your career, but at no point in our careers do we ever stop learning. Learning. It's best to learn and understand both success and mistakes while you're in a role that has minimized risk or impact to the overall success of the project. This is why we're learning the next role above our current role because it has no impact on our current role. I want to say that again. You want to learn the next role before you are actually working in that role. The higher you get in your career, the more impactful your decisions are going to be to the overall success of the project with smaller margins of error. Again, so the basic point I'm trying to make is that you don't want to be learning how to be an assistant project manager after you've become an assistant project manager. You want to fully understand how to be an assistant project manager while you're a project engineer. I know this sounds simple and it is, but really this is leading up to the point I'm trying to make, which is a fast paced career growth plan, which coincides with promotion. And I do want to take a brief moment to talk about time as it relates to everything else we're talking about. A lot of people might believe that promotions are based on time spent with the company which may partially be true. Promotions, however, are more often than not based on short and long-term value that you can provide a company. If you've been with a company for 10 years, but you can't fulfill the duties
duties of the roles above you, the company doesn't have much reason to promote you. So the faster you can learn and understand the roles and the responsibilities of the job you want, the faster you can start to self-advocate your value to the company. And I'm gonna return to this discussion about self-advocating at the end of this video. So there is one major way to help excel and fast track career growth beyond just listening. That's finding a mentor or multiple mentors and asking direct questions to help define that unknown path we were talking about earlier in this video. So in our example, as a project engineer looking to be an assistant project manager and we're sitting on a job with an assistant project manager, that person could be a potential mentor. The faster you can define the path they took to get to where they are, the faster you can start walking it. So after you've done about a month or so of listening, you'll start to understand who it is on your team that knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. Some people on your team might be very good at certain tasks, while others on your team might not be, and vice versa. John is our assistant project manager, and John is great at scheduling. So let's go talk to John and ask John what steps he took to become a better scheduler. Print out John's schedule and start to read through it when you have time. Let's say John isn't great with bid packages and scope preparation. Well, bid packages and scope preparation are a big part of that next role as an APM that John might be figuring out. So let's see who else on our team could be a better resource to help explain this. So Paul, the project manager, is great with bid packages and scope prep. So we're going to go talk to Paul about what it means to be successful in project buyout and how Paul approaches this in general. Start reading through Paul's bid packages and how Paul wrote his scopes and ask yourself why things were written the way they were. If you can't explain it to yourself, that's a good question to ask Paul if he's willing to help mentor you. It's also great to extend this mentorship and ask these questions to people in the field such as your site superintendent. It just helps broaden your overall knowledge and understanding of the industry in general, which is going to better equip you for future projects. So I suggest approaching this overall method with the multiple mentor mindset, learning strengths, weaknesses, and then applying them to your role in your career path. Nobody is perfect at everything, so somewhat keep your ear open to those who are good at certain things and see if they're willing to talk to you. Not everyone is going to be willing to or have time to, so this is something you'll just have to navigate throughout your career to pull from resources where you can and when you can. So when you don't have these individuals available, you're going to have to just continue to self-educate to fill in these gaps. Learn as much as you can on your own in these situations, write your questions down, and then the next time you're sitting with someone who is at a higher level than you or someone you come across, ask them if they're willing to explain it to you. You don't want to inundate your team with a flood of questions just to ask questions. You want to research as much as you can in your own time and then ask thoughtful leftover questions that you still can't answer. You won't learn unless you ask. So finally, one last tip, and you don't have to do this at all, and I would only suggest this if your workload allows. If you're not keeping up with your current workload, you're not ready to take on anything else. Once you've been listening long enough, once you've asked enough questions, ask your project manager for a couple additional tasks in that role above you. This will tell them that you're a self-starter and you want to start to learn what that role entails by taking on these tasks. So you're going to do this every step of your career, and the faster you can define these paths through mentorship, the faster you'll be able to work your way into promotion. Emotions. Your needs for mentorship are going to change based on where you're at in your career, so you'll flow in and out of relationships, which is totally okay. The important thing to remember is that someone or multiple people mentored you, so just remember to pay it forward, be a good person, and help mentor others along the way as well. Finally, you've got to self-advocate for your own career path. Having these mentors who can support your career are the invisible backup when you go to ask for that promotion. Not having anyone by your side makes the path much more difficult, which is why relationships are so important, especially in construction. This goes back to your mentors. Be a good team player. Your mentors are giving you invaluable knowledge, so support them as best as you can at whatever project level you're at in your team. Next, communicate with your boss what your career expectations are as early and often as you can and ask them exactly what else you need to be doing to meet those goals. You should be deciding the timeline on when you should be achieving those goals or milestones, not your boss. This is because you want to put the timeline of your career path in your own hands so you can manage to that yourself. What this also does is it establishes a trackable metric that you can now say to your boss, I've done this, this, and this, which is what was expected of me when we talked about a promotion X months ago. I'm moving forward in this timeline. Do you agree or disagree? Are we both on the same page on my career trajectory? I'm providing X value currently, and I'm ready to take the next steps to provide X more value under this new role. It's easy to talk and track when you've established that point A so that you know that you're moving
moving towards that further point Z, which is the project manager, assistant project manager, or whatever your goal may be. It's hard to jump right into a promotional conversation without setting the precedence first. And what you need to ask along this whole path, and especially with your boss, is if they're actually there to advocate for your growth or not. If they are, wonderful. If not, you should probably reconsider where you're working at or who you're working for. Don't settle for the limitations of management above you. Keep working towards your goal. All right, I hope you had a couple takeaways from this video as you approach your career, as you learn to self-advocate, self-promote, but most importantly, learn to give back when you can. You advance further into leadership roles when you're capable of making everyone else around you successful while maintaining your own success. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.